It picks up. It picks up right. Hello, everyone. It's your girl Jay, and today I am here with my part three of three wrap up for March 2020. I read a total of 18 books, so this is the last seven that I've read for this month. So without further ado, let us get started. So the first three books are actually part of the same series. They are The Ugly series by Scott Westerfeld. First book, Uglies. Second book, Pretties. Third book, Specials. I have extras, have not read it yet. Um, <laughs> I have a lot to say about this series. I gave the first book a 3.5 out of 5 stars, then the next two 3 out of 5 stars. This series follows a girl named Tally Youngblood who has been waiting a very long time to turn 16 in order to get a surgery which turns uglies into pretties. Once a pretty, you basically move into pretty town and you get to live a life of luxury and glamour and parties. Tally is very excited about her surgery coming up very soon and then she meets a girl named Shay who has been talking about rejecting the surgery and running off to live in the smokes. She invites Tally to join her in the smokes, but Tally refuses, and then on the day of her surgery, she is given an ultimatum. Either track down your friend and betray her, bring her back to become a pretty, or remain ugly forever, and it's like the story of that. So I did enjoy the first book. I gave it a 3.5, like I said. It was entertaining, although very predictable. The concept was intriguing and I liked the overall message about how it's not about what someone looks on the outside, it's about what's on the inside, blah blah blah. But as the whole series progressed, it just kind of went downhill for me. I liked Tally in the first book and then my like for her kind of dissipated throughout the story and then it would come back as it progressed. Like it was, she's very wishy-washy with me. I liked Shay in the first book until she became possessive over David and then she just kind of got annoying to me and then throughout the series her whole character just rocketed downwards for me. By the second book I was not the biggest fan of Tally and I hated the relationship between Tally and Zane. I just didn't care. I would have much rather it have been less of a focus on the relationship aspect of the story and more of a focus on the cure for becoming pretties and what that meant for Tally and her friends, but alas, you can't get what you want. I'm also not the biggest fan of love triangles unless it's done well, which in my opinion this was not done well, so like I said, just not a big fan of the romance. Wish that there was more a focus on the cure. Also in pretties there was a lot of the use of the R word which if you watched my part two wrap up for Marge I talked about how I just don't like that word. It makes me uncomfy and I'm not a fan of it. So moving on to the third book specials I enjoyed it but still not as much as uglies. It picks up right where pretties ends which I did like that we didn't have to go through the whole like recap of the story which I'm sure I would have appreciated if I hadn't read these back to back but I did so. This one was very slow in the beginning. It did pick up at the end but it just took me a really long time to get into it. Honestly the second and third books were just repeats of the first book like you could have just ended the story on the first book and it would have been fine. Apparently extras was like added on as like an afterthought because this was originally supposed to be a trilogy so I am interested to see where the story goes but I don't know I'm getting rid of this series because I just don't care about it so. The next book that I read for this part of the wrap up is I Wish You All the Best by Mason Deaver. This book follows Ben who after coming out to their parent as non-binary they are kicked out of their house and end up living with their estranged older sister Hannah and her husband Thomas. Ben begins at a new school and that is where they meet Nathan Allen who they become closer with as the school year progresses and it's like the story of that. I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I think that it is a very important book and I think that a lot of people who struggle with their gender identity will really see themselves in this book. I love that it is an own voices book and I think that a lot of people need a story like this so I'm glad that it exists. My heart absolutely broke for Ben and I feel for what they went through and it's devastating because a lot of teenagers or even just children go through this as well so it was very heartbreaking to see but I loved watching them grow as the story progressed. I absolutely loved Nathan. He was just such a bright light for Ben and just a little ray of sunshine. The book has a very heavy focus on relationships, not only romantic but 
also familial, which I really enjoyed. I did only give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars because I felt at times the book was very repetitive and it just took away from my enjoyment, but I definitely recommend you guys check it out if you're interested because it is a really heart-wrenching story and one that shouldn't be read by a lot of people. The next book that I read is To Be Honest by Maggie Ann Martin. I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. It follows Savannah who, after her older sister leaves for college, she is left with her overbearing mother at home. Ever since her mother was on a reality weight loss TV show, she has become obsessed with her weight and is now focusing her attention on Savannah and wanting her to follow in her footsteps. Savannah wants nothing more than to escape her overbearing mother and the feeling of missing her sister and that's when she meets a boy named George and it's like the story of that. I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. I enjoyed how the story was not solely focused on Savannah's weight. It was more of a focus on relationships, familial, romantic, as well as friends, which was great. I really like the female-female relationship between Savannah and Grace, as well as Savannah and her sister. I thought that they were really well done. Both were super supportive and showed love between the two of them, and it was just really nice to see. I was not the biggest fan of the romance. I did not like George and the way that he treated Savannah and her feelings. I was just not down for the, I don't know how I feel about you, but like, I like you, but like, mm, you know, like it was very wishy-washy and it just bothered me. Like, be upfront about your feelings, my friend, and everything would have been totally avoided. I also really liked the anxiety and panic attack rep in this book. I think that a lot of people will be able to relate to it and see themselves in this book. I think my favorite part of the story was the complex relationship between Savannah and her mother. I think that it was really well done and I found it very interesting to watch it develop and unfold as the story progressed. Next book so, I'm not going to talk too much about because I have a full vlog of it if you want to check out my reactions while reading it, but it is Harry Potter number five. The Order of the Phoenix. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. Obviously, check out the vlog because it was a really good time and let me know down below if you guys want me to read the sixth book in the same fashion as this one because I had a good time. And then the last book that I'm going to be talking about in this part of the wrap-up is The Merciless Three Origins of Evil by Danielle Vega. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. I did not know this going in, but it is actually the prequel... prequel? Prequel? I don't know. To The Merciless, I thought this was just another book in the companion series, you know? But no, it is Brooklyn's origin story and I was here for it but also not here for it. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. I definitely did not enjoy it as the first book if you guys have been on this channel for the very beginning of time. I gave the first book a 5 out of 5 stars. Granted, I read it back in like 2014, so my taste could change drastically from then if I were to reread it. I'm not going to because I don't reread books, but I definitely respect this book more that I know that it is a prequel to the first book because I did not know that going in until I finished reading the book and then I was like, wait a second. It kind of gave you a more insight into why Brooklyn was the way that she was in the first book and why Riley thought that she needed to exercise Brooklyn in the first place. It definitely kind of tied everything together and made the first book make a lot more sense, but the writing was just not good. Like, it was very juvenile and just honestly it was not a good book, but I think nostalgia factor kind of boosted the rating for me because I was just into it. Honestly, the book just kind of felt like a repeat of all of the other books. It was just a girl gets kidnapped, tied up, yelled at by some religious freaks, escapes, fire starts, people die. Like that's basically just the, all the books in this series, but they're entertaining. So what can I say? Overall, it was entertaining, but definitely could have been executed better but I did really enjoy seeing where Brooklyn came from and the whole relationship with Riley, so. All right, everybody, so that was my part three of three wrap-up for March 2020. I'll leave the other two parts of the wrap-up down below if you want to check out those books. Let me know down below if you have read any of these, what you thought of them, and I'll see you all in my next video. Goodbye!